Welcome back to Neko Nation Japan. This is Jeremy. Today we're going to talk about March 1st to March 31st in 2017 and look at what kind of dividends we've accumulated in this time. So this is the first month where I've actually received dividend payments from the stocks that I purchased last month and the month before. So we got a total of $8 in our total dividend payment resulting in a net gain of $15.42 this is from both this eight dollar dividend gain and a little bit of rise in my share prices so getting right into this i hope you're excited to see i uh, it's i wouldn't say it's super exciting but it's definitely just knowing this constant increase in these dividend payments every quarter every month it's really exciting as far as i'm concerned all right getting right into this and come on there we go so we have here our totals so we bought we have our AT&T at 23 shares price per unit this 4155 so unrealized gain loss I lost a little money in there but whatever so then I have Apple seven shares bought that for one hundred and forty three dollars and sixty six cents which looking at what Apple is priced now that was an excellent price and I totally wish I should have bought more shares at that time but hindsight's 2020 I'm afraid all right we get into coca-cola uh, 23 shares at forty two dollars and forty four cents per share Dow chemical company Dow whole bunch of things happened with this company later on and we'll get into it I bought 15 shares at a unit price of $63.54. Exxon Mobil Corporation, 12 shares, $82.01. Johnson & Johnson, 10 shares at $24.55. Not bad. Uh, McDonald's Corporation, 7 shares at $129.06. Microsoft Corporation, 15 shares at $65.86 also a really good buy it, this particular stock goes up tremendously since the last time I bought this so we have Southern Company $20 49.78 per share and 3M Company uh, 5 at 191.33 per share that is I believe my most expensive Oh, except for this one just a little bit more so I have 191 and then this the public storage company is I only bought four shares for two hundred eighteen dollars and ninety one cents both of those are my highest costing shots sh that shares those are both I have 3m and public storage company are my highest costing uh, price per share so getting right in these are the purchases bought 23 shares 44 uh, 20 23 shares again seven shares 15 and going right down to the list this is this month's acquisition looking here we have our general overview of exactly how many shares per company I have the red signifies that I bought shares of that specific company during this month so we have AT&T 23 shares Apple seven shares were just bought uh, Coca-Cola it goes from 23 to 23 no change there Dow Chemical bought myself 15 shares uh, Excom or Exxon Mobil Corporation I bought 12 shares of that Johnson Johnson same McDonald's same seven Microsoft 15 shares Procter and Gamble I haven't it's next month I had that and I just didn't take that out so Procter & Gamble is coming in soon uh, Southern Company 20 shares 3M 5 shares and the public storage 4 shares now why do I particularly show this this is what I want to show every month I'm slowly getting more and more shares of every specific stock including what I've pur purchased for that stock as long as as well as the amount of dividends I've been paid in that particular I'll do total dividends 
um, it would be a lot to break it down per company I in my current portfolio I have 14 companies as you can see here it's not quite fill out yet but we're getting there so today we're gonna do a little bit of analysis and run through one of uh, now I say my favorite companies but I don't really like their I don't use their products but I like the way they do the company and what their company runs and how they do it that is the mega corporation Apple so Apple has significant sales around the world of you know the iPhone uh, airbooks all kinds of different things so we're looking at here some of our basic information so we have net sales from 2014 to 2018 you see just this pretty steady climb we've had a so 233 and then it dipped a little here going up and up and up quite a bit not too bad net income they've always particularly except for in 2016 they had a bit of a drop but steady income growth so earnings per share is kind of ridiculous and magnificent because this nice earning per share here will result in perhaps and I hope that eventually so if you look at this right they have this cash dividends declared per share of two dollars and seventy two cents in 2018 but the amount of money they're earning per share they have tremendous room to raise that dividend which I hope they do now I don't hope they go super high up right away but slowly increasing it over time would be awesome with apples large just kind of a huge um, earnings per share the basic and the diluted shares and then we have a payout of only two dollars and seventy two cents so we have almost ten more dollars to be applied to either company for growth or pay out a little more for dividends down the line uh, then we have shares used in computing earnings per share this is just basically how many shares in the company um, total total and cash equivalents the amount of money this company has is ridiculous total assets non return to debt look at they could literally pay off everything to turn around and do it tomorrow and their their balance sheets would still be awesome so this is a really company I want to buy more shares in and get a better dividend payout per month well, per quarter but their price is kind of it's kind of high at the moment and that's kind of the reason why is because they're doing pretty good so in America sales so net sales reported by segments so America Europe China Japan and rest of Asia so I like the Japan where I am particularly they have the iPhone is super popular here just about everybody has an iPhone I don't say I do but I got on Samsung's bandwagon a while back and I kind of like it I like its appeal and that kind of thing a good quality phone for the price now I can't help Apple makes a good product I'm not gonna argue that but it's just too proprietary this and that it doesn't really work right with Windows which I am a Windows user so it doesn't fit in my basket we'll say so in the Americas great 112 awesome went up from 96 so I just increase 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 awesome so 12% increase and 16% even better 10 to 14 and then gonna inverse went down there because 16 wasn't the best year for Apple but hey we all have our years I think they're still doing pretty damn good so their particular sales by product iPhone iPad Mac services other products so definitely their iPhone is what's carrying them right now but with like the Apple TV and all those things I think a lot of that market and especially Netflix and all that are gonna be hurt by this especially with Disney Plus coming out 
it's going to be a slaughter fest. I don't know who's going to win, but it's going to be mass hysteria. Everybody's going to be fighting for position, and we'll see who comes out on top, or if they decide to buy one another or something like that or work together it would be cool. So cash and class equivalents, ridiculous amounts of cash on these balance sheets. Uh, property plants equipment, uh, there's more every year. They're starting to put more and more factories. Uh, they still do China, and they're being hurt a little bit by the tariffs. But again, this is 2000. The when I bought it in 2017, it was they didn't have any of this. So when they long-term debt, they got a they got a chunk there, but it's half the amount of cash they have sitting on their balance books. You gotta love that. So they could literally pay off all their debt tomorrow, and still be pretty damn good company. Great balance sheets. All right. Working capital, that's okay. Uh, cash and finance activities. Eh, their interest rate now are so ridiculously low. They said, "Oh, we might as well borrow money. It doesn't cost us too much to, you know, hold back on it." Um, so we have long-term debts. Uh, so the particular time places that's due. So payments due in 2019, eight thousand. Payments between these two ten years that 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 super ridiculously low compared to their overall cash and cash equivalents, but so cash and cash equivalents two thousand eighteen markup securities there accounts receivable eh, you know they always have those got to get some in um, vendors assets current assets and total current assets. Uh, they try to get in more and more assets every year. That's a great company to be, a great place to be. Uh, that is kind of what I'm trying to do now is look into what particular assets I can find around here in Japan and slowly increase them. All right, so we're looking at some of the liabilities. I know it's a little bit of a broken record, but hey, hey, let's break down a little bit. So accounts payable, that they're waiting on this money. Uh, other current liabilities, 32,000, deferred revenue, commercial paper, Term debt so particularly low compared to their overall. All right, um, non-current liabilities, so long-term debt. That's uh, had to chunk a change in total, but still pretty good. All right, common stock, additional shares, equities. Uh, 40,000, not too bad. Retail earnings, 70,000, pretty good. Cumulative income loss, total shares and equity, sh total shareholders equity, 107,000. Uh, total liabilities and shareholder equity, 365,000. So it's went down a little bit. So obviously decreasing liabilities is a good thing. Uh, sorry, it's a little blurry. So I'll try to get this a little bit cleaned up for you, but odds are I had to shrink it down a bit to fit it to the page because it's a lot of particular financial information that Apple puts out there, and I want to try to go over with this, with it every time with you, and hopefully I can increase my proficiency in it and my communicative skills so I can communicate better with you. All right, let's see. September 2016, we have 21,000 drop in. So this cash and cash equivalents, so it dropped a thousand and dropped a little bit more. So net income, net income went up, which is good. Uh, now depreciation amortization, that's pretty much constant. Uh, shares, but da, 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 some, something interesting here. Nothing really speaks to me. Uh, bottom line. Generated cash by operating activities has been increasing, which is awesome, especially for your dividend shareholders like myself. Um, purchase of marketing security abilities. Uh, basically, they bought some securities. Uh, purchase, purchase, purchase. They bought less in, uh, was it 2018? Yeah, they bought a little bit less, but overall, so they had somewhat of a negative here. Do, 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 and then positive net coming out I like that so what we have here is a whole bunch of pay downs of debts and different activities um, 
increase, decrease in cash equivalents. So, blah, 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 cash and cash equivalents, end of year. So, you know, dipped a little bit and then went back up, which is awesome. So, cash paid for income. Pretty much all the same. A little bit of spike here and that, but from interest. So, that. So that's a basic rundown of Apple. Now we're going to go ahead and hop into uh, current Apple prices on uh, Seeking Alpha. Is we're going to head to Seeking Alpha and see what the current price and liabilities are. So right here we see the general overview in Seeking Alpha. I really like this website uh, thus far. It's been very great for just looking at particular stocks and figuring out what's going on with that. Uh, right now we're going to go into Apple. Uh, the dividend date uh, is 8 9, so current. So we've got a little bit, mm, almost a month or so, and it should be paying out the next one. Uh, we'll see exactly how that, but looking at, the, so we look at our Apple dividend rate of 3.8, dividend yield of 1.31, which is kind of, that's kind of on the low side, but. We're looking at a company that hopefully will be raising that soon. The payout ratio of 26.3%. Very, very low, which we would like to see. Uh, so three years, 11%. Over five years, 10%. Uh, average over four years, we have 25.8. And dividend yield over four-year average of 1.7. Let's get in there and look at this beautiful thing called Apple. All right, we have the general price. So the 52-week high of 23638 and the 52-week low back in the beginning of the year, it was the 148. I bought a few more shares during that time and I wish I bought even more than that, but you'll see that in later videos. All right. So what are we going to do? We're going to head right over here to our dividends and check out our dividends store scorecard see how long so they've been paying this dividend uh, dividend growth for the past seven years uh, the growth rate has been 10.84 percent payout ratio again is 26.27 and current payout of annual is 3.08 so our dividend yields 1.31 percent it's quarterly paid uh, the record date at 812 and the payout date was 815 and I received that and you know 77 per share and that wasn't too bad wasn't too bad I'd still wish I own more but you know that's how it goes all right so we're gonna check out our head over here to dividend yield and I'd, the real information over here is our dividend safety in that so our yield on it has been good when it was low price you know it, it fluctuates but what you're gonna do all right uh so year end average yield so two point they weren't paying it then so one percent yield so 2018 that's a little bit better yield than hmm. oh, not too bad though all right let's head over to our dividend safety all right, so the payout ratio is 26.2. Cash dividend payout ratio, uh, 24.3. So it pays out 24% of its cash, which is pretty good. Uh, Long-term debt, minus 3%. Huh. Wow. All right, so let's check out our dividend history. See how many payments we've had. And what I like to see, we're going to go right over here to all. So when they started in 2013 here's when I started to buy Apple and all my other shares for that matter we see from that point on it's just been a gradual gradual just heading up and up and up and up and up and that's what I love to see I love to see that increasing dividends which results in a magnificent yield it made this you know one two percent it doesn't look like much but if it's constantly increasing so if, if they have ten percent yield and they say, oh, we have this 10% of me, but they keep on cutting the dividends because the share price is going down or any of that or the company's not doing well. 
you will not see this nice ever increasing linear growth curve and that's what i love to see all right with that i can't think of anything else um we'll check out dividend growth i suppose uh so yeah so again with the dividend growth the straight up in one year growth rate about 10 to 11 percent every year that's what i love to see all right with that thank you very much this has been jeremy from neko nation japan talking to you more about my dividend Roth portfolio i hope you like this and please like it subscribe and leave a comment below i'd love to hear if you like this you didn't like this what specifically you would like to see in this particular type video or if you just wouldn't like to see it at all that's fine too all right with that thank you so much for watching sayonara